have with us uh, Chairman TRAI, Dr. Rahul Kullar, speaking to ET now after he gave his recommendations on 2G pricing last week. Sir, uh, you have given your recommendations for pricing of uh, spectrum in various bands, but you've also talked at length about how there needs to be uh, a certain quantum of spectrum to actually have a meaningful auction. How realistic do you think it is uh, to expect the DOT to actually conduct uh, uh, spectrum across various bands given the paucity of spectrum at this stage? Um, I think if you read the recommendations carefully, what you will see is that uh, what we are saying is this. The 900 and 1800 megahertz quantum of spectrum that's up for auction is extremely limited. Since it's very limited, you're going to have a scarcity driven or a supply constrained auction again. This may well mean realization of very high prices by government, right. but it is uh, a double-edged sword because it will hurt the industry. Right. And uh, we have explained this at quite some length. Uh, our position is quite simply this, that there are many things that the government can do even now before, well before the auction to increase that supply, right. be it 900 or 1800. I mean, we've given examples of how you need to resume spectrum from BSNL. There are right. instances of contiguity of spectrum which will release additional spectrum. And then we've made a clear position on 2100, which is that, look, how long is this uh, squabble with defense going to go on? Right. At some point, we need to settle it release the 3G spectrum and that will reduce the pressure on 900 because if I, if people get the 2100 spectrum and they can run their 3G on that, then they will not have to devote 900 for voice. Uh, it's a, meaning these are all difficult decisions, I am not doubting their difficulty and that is why I think the authority took the view that this is no longer any more bureaucratic turf. It's mm -hmm. a waste of time, in our view, to leave it to the bureaucrats. The leaving it to the bureaucrats, we left it to the bureaucrats for the last seven years. Nothing Absolutely. has happened. Right. So you think it has to be it between has ministers? To be at the political. It can only be done at the political level. And the defense minister, the finance minister, and the telecom minister have to get together and decide. The telecom and defense minister must come to first an agreement of what they can or cannot give. And the finance minister must also take a, make a judgment as to how much revenue he needs. Absolutely. Uh, so it's a balancing act for government, but it is also an act which is impossible to avoid at this point of time. And uh, our view is that this should be done uh, immediately. And there's ample time to do the auction. I think there's no, no great rush. But sir, the government seems to be in a rush to actually conclude this auction by February. Now, I understand that fiscal constraint, but please understand, we have also pointed out, what good is it mm. if you, say you conduct a 900 auction right. and an incumbent gets thrown out. Right. All right. Which is a fair possibility at Which this stage. Which is a possibility. Yeah. Then the entire investment that has been made in that LSA is a dud. Right. That means you've created a non-performing asset for the banking sector. Absolutely. So what you've gained in one pocket, you've lost from the other pocket. True. True. Now explain to me how that makes good economic sense. True. So you would rather want an auction to happen probably next financial year, keeping you know all other constraints and in addressing all other issues. No, I am. Let me put it. I think that if they have the political will. And that political will has been demonstrated over the last week or 10 days, right. in fact, last three or four days Absolutely. with the spate of reforms right. on, on, on gas, on oil, on coal, prices right. and coal. Right. Now, if they can take these difficult decisions, what is so hard about deciding about spectrum? Right. Right. And so the next set of reforms sh should probably focus on telecom. My, and more gu my guess is just call that meeting, take a decision. Once you've taken the decision, the bureaucrats are all set. Right. Uh, then you can hold an auction. Right. 
but if you want to go ahead and hold an auction right now, I it's think meaningless you are at this stage. I wouldn't say it's meaningless, but I think you are going to all you will end up doing is you will enrich the government at the cost of the industry. At the cost of the industry, and you will fill a budget hole. At the same time, create at other the same time, setting the industry back three to four years. Right. What I mean. What sense is there in that? So there is a parallel view within the government that from a revenue implication point of view that you could probably have a skeletal 2G auction and that could probably set, set the stage for a very aggressive 3G auction that could probably follow a couple of uh, months down the line. No, I don't agree. Uh, I think if you, and I don't think you know this language of 2G and 3G you should throw out. Absolutely. We are auctioning 900 spectrum, 1800 spectrum. Right. And Please understand, this may have been 2G spectrum at one point of time. Yes. The 1800 spectrum is now going to be LTE spectrum. Absolutely. You know that and I know that. Yes. Yes. 2600 spectrum, 25, 2600 spectrum is yes. going to be 1800, is going to be LTE spectrum. LTE, yeah. When we did the auction in May 2010, we knew it was a supply constrained auction. Right. And we saw the results. And you saw, you saw what exactly what happened. Right. You created a problem in terms of not giving spectrum to everybody on a pan-India basis. When they started getting to ICR arrangements, then you stopped, stopped the ICR arrangements. Right. And from an economic sense, this is a complete no-brainer. Yeah. Meaning, if you are completely short of spectrum yeah. in 2100, then from an economic perspective, from a national perspective, you must permit sharing. Yeah. The alternative is release more spectrum. Release more spectrum yeah. But to do neither, to say I will not all I will not release spectrum and not allow roaming and I will not allow intercircuit roaming. Yeah. How is that a solution? Yeah. So I mean. So so for you, what would be the solution? Because because the TRA's views also on the on the intercircuit roaming sort of agrees with the DOT's stance. So so your solution or the TRA's solution? No no. Let me put it this way. I DOT's stance on intercircuit roaming is a technical stance. I don't wish to quarrel with it. They wish to go to the Supreme Court. Yeah, they've gone, right. But as the regulator, I cannot stand by and say that they have solved the problem. Mm -hmm. Either you increase the supply yeah. or you legitimize ICR. Right. Charge a fee if you have to legitimize ICR. Right. But do something. Mm. Ne doing neither does not solve the problem. Yeah. Right. It kills the industry's huge potential as far as data Correct. is concerned. And I think that that's the way uh, it's going to go forward, which is why the authority is very clear that when it made the 900, 1800 recommendations that need these, these things need to be done. Lo and behold, you know, barely had we sent the recommendations out two days later. The reserve price uh, reference. They sent back a reference saying said 2100, 2300, 2600. Right. So, I think in one sense, both the department and the authority are on the same page this time. There is no difference of perspective. I think what is really required is some political will to take a decision. Yes, we will release the spectrum. Right. Once you do that, and you're hopeful this time around in this regime. I think. I think it is. I think they realize that telecom is a key infrastructure. I think the prime minister. The Honorable Prime Minister has announced again and again about digital dividend, digital divide, increasing rural teledensity, all the things that require, and broadband most right. importantly. Right. Now, none of this is going to happen. If such issues are not addressed. If see, these spectrum issues are not addressed. Guaranteed. Take it in writing today. Right. If the spectrum issues, the quantum of spectrum issues are not addressed yeah. immediately. Then all this business of broadband and uh, rural tele density and th this is a pipe dream. Right. Yeah. And it has to happen now. Those decisions. It has to, to happen now. now. Right. It has to happen now. So likewise, also a decision on 4G uh, or, or on 700 megahertz. Let's let's talk about 700. The authority is clear that you know there needs to be a roadmap for 700 before the next round of auctions. Yeah. The intention was that if you adopt that, then immediately a signal goes out that a billion customers will be switching to this right. band. Right. 
when a billion customers are switching to that band, an ecosystem develops. Right. Nobody is going to develop an ecosystem if they don't know what you're going to do. Right. Now, the logically prior decision, therefore, is to first accept that recommendation that yes, we, the government of India, will use the APT 700 plan. Right. Next, simultaneously announce when you will auction that spectrum. Right. Once you send these two signals, the market will realize, an ecosystem will develop, so that by the time you come to the auctions, mm -hmm. people will bid aggressively because an ecosystem is available. But if you decide in advance, that you can clean up the 700 spectrum, yes. get it unencumbered, announce Create the APT 700, yeah. announce a plan, yes. immediately you start sending signals to telecom operators that all right, if I miss the 900 boat, I can still wait for the 700 boat. Right. Yes. But if you announce neither, yeah. Yeah. you are leaving them literally high and dry. So, I think it's time that these are decisions which have, you know, been pending or hanging fire for a very long time. Very, very long time. And I think it's uh, it's time that uh, politicians who are leading the country take a decision, set the policy for it, because left to themselves, the bureaucrats won't. Yeah, this hasn't happened for so long. Yes, it will never happen. So, so, do you think there's a case for actually auctioning all of them simultaneously, one after the other, in a quick succession? I, th I suspect that you can do 900, 1800, 2100, 2300 together. Okay, yes. okay these four you can do together. Right. 900, 1800, subject to the recommendations we've made. Right. 2100, provided the spectrum issue with the defense is sorted out. And 2300, because it's available. Right. 25, 2600, we are still in the process of working out issues. Mm -hmm. But at some point of time, mm -hmm. the question is going to arise. This is LTE spectrum. Right. Okay? Right. So, have, has India decided mm -hmm. that India wishes to use 1800 and 2600 mm -hmm. as the dual carrier technology like Korea right. for delivering LTE? Right. In which case, the question that remains outstanding is, what are they going to do with their 700 Bengal? There has to be some roadmap. So, so as far as 700 is concerned, mm -hmm. you can't say, I will do 25, 2600, and not simultaneously say, what am I going to do with 700? Mm -hmm. You will be sending very bad signals to the market. Mm. Right. So there's also some some view uh, within the DOT or let's say within the industry that you know given that so much of expiry is going to happen in the next two three years, 15, 16, and 17, why not auction together instead of having an auction every every eight months, every ten months, or every year? Isn't that something that will be a lot uh, more fruitful as an exercise? Possible, but um, it's a difficult issue. It's not. Uh, and that also has been referred to us right. just in that letter which has just come. The real problem is that licenses go on till 2025. Right. Now, supposing I got a license at 16.58 crores right. till 2025, why would I want to advance the auction to right. today? And pay and market price. And, and pay market price from yeah. today. Yes. Uh, so, you know, there, there will be those who will scream and howl about that. Right. Uh, I think the real problem is not so much about bringing everybody to the same date. Mm -hmm. The real problem is this, that when you have, today at least you have 29 licenses expiring. Right. But in 16, 17, you just have two licenses. Right. The yes. problem then is going to be even more acute than it is today. And that is the context in which this has to be looked at. That is, in 16, 17, and 20, 20 yes. can you at least club those auctions rather than have you know piecemeal auctions? Piecemeal auctions year. as and when license as and when spectrum and license expire. But that's a that's a huge policy decision that has to be taken. Correct. Now, to be fair, I mean, let me be fair to the DOT. They have just sent us the reference right. on Friday. Right. We have not begun work on it. So, I am not in a position to tell you anything beyond that. Right. 
all I can tell you is that this idea was floated earlier mm -hmm. during the 900, 1800 uh, consultation. Some people did come up with that right. and every single one abandoned the idea. Right. But the duty is still, <laughs> is Every still exploring. Every single telecom it. operator abandoned the idea. Yeah. It yes. hurts them. It hurts their, uh, their well, interest. Well, that's for you to judge. But right. initially, the, all of them wrote, we will do it this way. And then when the open house discussion was held, not a single operator got up to say advance auction. Mm -hmm. They were too concerned about what's going to happen right now. Mm -hmm. right. So I think, I think it's an important issue. We can't make a snap judgment about it right now. Wait your time out. Let's see what happens and then we'll see. Sir, also about uh, regulatory scenario right now, a lot of uh, regulations, a lot of recommendations really have come out from TRAI, but decision making still is yet to really uh, catch up uh, uh, with TRAI's recommendation pace. So, do you think that that is something that needs to speed up for, for the industry to really see a lot yeah, more? I think that is something the authority keeps getting references. We send recommendations back and then they just keep lying. <laughs> they, can't, they are in limbo. Now, I am not one to say anything beyond that because the licensor's job is different from the regulator. The, the regulator is to make a recommendation. Government likes it, doesn't like it. It's their call. Right? It's their call. Right. So I can't uh, expect everybody to con instantly accept our recommendations right. and move forward. Mm -hmm. But you are right that there are certain things which have been pending for too long. I think, for example, I'll give you an example. I think. Trading and sharing guidelines are typical examples of cases where the work has been done. That work has been done in tandem ago. with the industry. Right. It is not as if we dreamt it, everything up. Absolutely. And all you need to do is put a set of draft guidelines out right. and invite comments. After that, decide whatever you want to and be done with it. Yes. Similarly, on mergers and acquisitions, you've issued a set of guidelines. Industry has told you why it will not work. But that's where it's stuck. And it's still stuck there. Yes. So these are sorts of examples where I think urgent decisions are required again because these are the sorts of things which will help consolidation in the sector, which is absolutely essential. Right. Now, the other day, I think the Minister for Communications issued a statement that before the end of December, we will issue these guidelines. Right. I, that, that's good news if they do it, right. but the quicker they take these decisions, the better, the better it is, it is for, for the industry. industry. Given that this auction, if it were to take place in the shape that DOT wants it to, where only uh, expiry of uh, licenses really come up for uh, auction, you can really expect very aggressive bidding and do you think that could have an impact from a consumer point of view, A, on continuity of service and B, on tariffs? Well, it will definitely have an impact on continuity of service that we have said. Mm -hmm. Meaning, in any LSA, if an incumbent is thrown out, a new entrant comes in, the new entrant is going to take time to roll out. Absolutely. Which means all the customers will migrate to the other guy. What have you achieved? Right. You're giving significant market power to the other operator. Absolutely. For, for no reason whatsoever. So this is, and, and, and you're hurting customers. So that is absolutely true. I think the real problem is going to be that if auctions are held in a supply constraint situation and prices go through the roof, then you will have the follow-up difficulty that where do the resources come from investment? Right. Because there's just this much stock and investment given right. the right. Uh, right. indebtedness of the industry. So right. where are they going to get the money from? Yeah. And if investments are not going to get made. Yeah. Network rollout and a couple of other how I in, How is the industry supposed to grow? What we're going to do in the future? Okay, so one last question on extended GSM. This is something that the authority has talked about in its previous recommendation. It has reiterated its stance this time around as well. But but if you look at it from the CDMA operator's point of view, they are, they're very clear that this is something that's very, that hurts their interest. But what do you think is best in terms of the industry? What do you think is the solution given that we are really moving towards a GSM? Two, two things. One is that, please remember, there are effectively only two operators in CDMA. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Number two, if you look at what we said in the 800 megahertz paper, it is possible for the government to reallocate frequencies so that both of them get contiguous blocks and still free up spectrum for a EGSM. Now, it is a licensing condition that government can at any time change your spot frequencies. Right, absolutely. So, no telecom operator can turn around, you can't change my frequencies. Right. All right. Right. It can be done. Right. And it has been done unilaterally in the past by the very same DOT in the context of 1800 megahertz spectrum. Right. Right. So, what can be done for 1800? Why can't it be done for 800? Right. And most importantly, if it frees up anywhere between 5 megahertz to 10 megahertz of 900 equivalent spectrum. Yeah, that addresses a lot of industry it issues. It addresses a lot of industry level issues and the very same people who are clamoring for 900. Right. For instance, many of the 800 operators right. want to get 900. They will get 900 equivalent. Right. So, but what but what cannot happen is you cannot get 900 equivalent at a throwaway 800 price. Sorry, that is not possible. So, so some of the 800 megahertz operators are arguing that you know you, you keep lowering the price till it is absolutely. absolutely throw away right. and then because we will buy a, it. Yeah, right. Then we will buy it. Right. Big deal. Yes. I know you can use it for extended GSM at some point of time. I know that you can use it for LTE. Please give me one good reason why I should price it badly. So I am sorry. I am no. Uh, it is not that. It is not that the authority is hell bent on doing EGSM. It is just one of the many ways that makes commercial sense for the it industry. It makes commercial sense. It is easy to do. Uh, it will not cause any grave dislocation and yet it will increase the supply of spectrum. So, why should we not do it? Now, the previous government decided not to do it for whatever reason and we accepted that and we gave the 800 recommendations on that acceptance. Absolutely. Today, you have a new government and they are asking us 900, 1800. I do not think it is uh, unfair for us to at least point out that there is a solution that exists. Yes. You may like it, you may not like it, Absolutely. but do not ignore it as a possible solution to the problem. How optimistic are you that this time in this regime you could probably have EGM, EGSM that could actually address a lot that of industrial That I do I can't, I'm, I mean I'm not uh, worried so much about EGSM. As long as the politicians sit down and sit settle the release of additional spectrum across the board and tell the bureaucrats please go about and do this, then how they do it I could not care. Um, EGSM is just one of the many ways, it is not the only way. Right, BSN advocating way. is Correct, another, is another way. way. So, the, there are different ways of doing it. I do not think, I mean from a political perspective, it is not relevant who you hurt or who you uh, benefit. Right. As long the as only the question is, yeah. am I increasing the availability of spectrum and is it good for the industry? Right. Those are the only two questions that matter from a national perspective. Right. That is correct, sir. Unless and until quantum of spectrum issues are not addressed, uh, industry continues to suffer. Thank you so much for your Most time, welcome. sir. Thank you so much. That was Chairman TRAI Rahul Kuller speaking to ET now, explaining that unless and until big policy decisions are taken by the government, uh, the uh, broadband will continue to be a pipe dream for this government as well. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash etnow and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at etnowlive. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash user slash etnow.